again to Mr. Sinel de Guadalupe del Valle de Oaxaca for the celebration of the Sunday Mass. We are in the third Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving has shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was, to surpri he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, he, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I've heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask, you, if they ask me what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he said, this is what you tell the Israelites, I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses, thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The responsorial psalm is, The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills, he, de he redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing in his kindness towards those who fear him. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I, w I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as an example for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, glory to you, Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There was a person who had a fig planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it and found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now I've come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, folks, we've come to the third Sunday in Lent. We began Lent by saying on East, um, uh, Good Friday, I'm, I'm sorry, Ash Wednesday, that Lent was a time to return to God. This is our theme. In the first Sunday, we read about Jesus' temptations in the desert. Last Sunday, we read about the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. Today, we have a message from the Lord that unless we repent or reform, our future looks very grim. Now, we've always known that the word repentance means being sorry for the things that we have done wrong in our lives. But when you look closer, the word repent means to rethink, or as they say in Spanish, repensar. Rethink the way you live. You know, unfortunately, we live in such a secular society that it's becoming very difficult to live a Christian life. So let me ask you this. What is the worst sin that you think that you as a Christian Catholic can commit against the Lord. Of course, I'm assuming that you haven't killed anyone lately, or that 
uh, you haven't robbed a bank or something like that. But ask yourselves, what is the worst thing that you can do as a follower of Jesus Christ? Think about it, and then I'll come back to that in a moment. In chapter 16 of the Gospel of Luke, uh, Jesus tells the story of a rich man uh, who uh, wore uh, purple uh, and fine linen, and he dined sumptuously every day. And, uh, and at his gate lay a poor beggar by the name of Lazarus, uh, who would long to eat the scraps that fell from the man's table, but no one offered them to him. And the dogs came and even licked his sores. It's a terrible story. Um, the time came then for the beggar to die, and he died. And he was taken up to heaven, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Well, the rich man also died, but he didn't go to heaven. Instead, he found himself in hell, uh, where he was in terrible torment. He looked up one day and saw Abraham in heaven with uh, Lazarus at his side. And so he called out to him, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. I'm sure you remember that story. Well, the question is, why did the rich man end up in such a state? There's no evidence in Scripture that he was a bad person or that, you know, that he robbed the bank or did anything awful. Well, he didn't do any of those things except for one thing. He did nothing. Nothing. There was a poor man at his gate. Uh, dying of hunger, and he did nothing to help this man. And so often, uh, in Jesus' teachings, this is the sin that condemns people. Not something different, you know, desperately foul, but doing nothing. And he was talking about us today that if we don't bear fruit, then we're going to end up like uh, the rich man. And what kind of fruit was he talking about? Well, uh, St. Paul in his letter to the Galatians says the fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, <coughs> gentleness, self-control. And that's a good beginning. Good beginning. But caring for the down and out of this world tops the list, folks, according to Jesus' teachings. Caring for those who are sick, for those who are troubled, for those who are poor, for those who are hungry, and for those in trouble. Bearing fruit is something that we can all do. You know, we don't have to have a university degree to do that. We don't have to have a uh, a degree in, in computer science or something like that. All we need is the heart of Jesus Christ in us, giving us sensitivity to the needs of others around us and the willingness to do something about it. But notice in the Gospel today something quite interesting. I call it a moment of grace. The caretaker, after the man said, cut the, the tree down, the caretaker says, you know, sir, leave it for another year. I'll dig around it, I'll fertilize it, and if it bears fruit next year, fine, and if it doesn't, then cut it down. Interesting. The caretaker asked the master for one more year, uh, and what, he's, what he introduces in this story is a moment of grace. In other words, God is giving us the time to repent, the time to rethink. He's not cutting us down right away. He is giving us the time that we need to do the right thing, the loving thing for others, things that would bring God glory in this world. And so what he wants of us this Sunday, folks, is 
is, as if we want to get closer to God, we need to examine our hearts and ask ourselves during this Lent, are we living the best life that we can live? Are we the best version of ourselves? Our Christ used this period of grace to redeem us from sin and death. Let us take this moment of grace, which is Lent, to reach out to others, and may God help us to do that so that we can end up with Abraham at his side in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that the Lord is kind and merciful, we give our hearts to God and ask God to hear and answer these prayers. That the Church's leaders will be renewed in zeal, preaching wholehearted devotion to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That our elect officials will strive tirelessly to represent the interests of those who are marginalized by society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who are imprisoned, that they will be treated with justice and come to know God's mercy and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all in our parishes will make God more visible in the world by bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the intentions of today's Mass, for the repose of the soul of Abby Herrera Salazar, and Cleo and Clarissa Castellano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Eloy and Guadalupe Herrera and all the deceased members of the family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For the repose of the soul of Martin, Marty Coranda, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For the repose of the soul of Carmen and Juanita Romero and Lorraine Montoya, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Father John Conway and Father Hilaire Valiquette and Archbishop Robert Sanchez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And for the repose of the soul of Priscilla Vieira, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And for the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. God of all generosity, hear these prayers and answer them according to your will. Keep us close to you as we continue to prepare for our great Easter celebration, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, also work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. 
Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we beg you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, pronounced the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francisco, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, John Charles, our Bishop, Michael, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her faithful spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your loving church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come true to completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful that in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks Speak be to God. God.